Panorama TV presents How They Do That, where we explore the world of professional photographers and share their techniques with you. Here's your host, Mark Wallace. Hi everybody, welcome to this week's episode of Adorama TV's How'd They Do That? I'm Mark Wallace. Well, joining us on the show today is Ed Hidden. Ed is an exclusive photographer with iStock Photo, as well as the co-host of a very popular podcast called Light Source. Thanks for joining us today, Ed. Hi Mark, thanks for having me. Well, you bet. It's a little bit odd for me to be interviewing you because you've done so many interviews and I've been on Light Source a couple of times. So uh, thanks again for this rare opportunity to, uh, to talk to you. Well, let's start by talking a little bit about iStock Photo. So tell us uh, what it means to be an exclusive photographer and what do you do over there at iStock Photo? Well, sure. I'm, I've been an exclusive photographer with iStock. I've been over there for about eight years. Um, being exclusive with iStock means that my stock photography is only available for license on iStock Photo. Um, that carries some benefits with it as well. Um, what iStock does is we sell stock photography and we license it for um, business users, for advertisers, um, people that need an image for some sort of use and they need to license it and um, don't have time to actually go out and shoot it um, or it's just easier for them to go and find a pool of creative people that um, have already created images for the things that they need. Uh, one of the other things that I do that I'm a member of iStock, um, I'm a member of the inspection team so uh, when somebody submits an image to the website um, I kind of review it to make sure that all of the criteria matches for it to be um, accepted into the collection. So um, part of that, I've, I've seen a lot of images over the years. Well, let's talk a little bit about the inspection prog uh, process. I'm also a member of iStock Photo. I'm not an exclusive photographer with them, and, uh, but I have submitted a lot of images. And over the years, I've talked to a lot of students that also want to get into micro stock, which iStock photography fits into that category, I believe. Uh, and some of those people have talked to me and said things like they've tried to submit images but they're rejected or they've submitted a batch and a few of them are accepted but others are rejected. And I know through forums and other places on iStock Photo there are a lot of suggestions for people that want to do micro stock. So can you give us some of your suggestions and sort of the, uh, your perspective looking at all these images, hundreds and hundreds, how people can be a little bit more successful um, at micro stock? Well, certainly. Um, well, before you get started with iStock Photo, um, when you go on the website, there's a, a little training manual that they have that um, basically has all of the criteria um, that we go by when we're inspecting an image, um, making sure that your um, your ISO is set to the proper th uh, setting, that your JPEG compression is set to the, the proper settings. Um, sometimes we see a lot of people that are taking a shot and they just don't realize that you know there's a coke can on the table behind them or there's a McDonald's sign in the distance and things like that that you know carry a copyright are things that just can't be relicensed for commercial use and some of the resources that you can take available of um, if you're having trouble getting images accepted is there is a critique form on the website that you can submit an image that you've had a problem with and a lot of times that there are um, there's staff members and, and inspectors and admins that will offer advice and as well there's a lot of the photographers that are in that form as well that will suggest things that you could have done to improve an image. Well those are some great tips and advice. Um, now I know a lot of uh, photographers who aren't full-time photographers love iStock Photo because it keeps them sharp with their skills and they make some money along the way. Some people, however, they want to make more than just a couple of dollars. They want to make at least a part-time living. Are there any books or resources that you know of that can help them get from where they are to where they'd like to be? Well, there are a couple of books that are out on the market right now that are kind of addressing this, this kind of niche market that's been cropping up. Uh, one of them is um, a friend of mine who actually works at iStock, and he, is, um, he also contributes with, uh, to uh, NAPS Photoshop User Magazine. Um, you may have seen his name is Rob Sylvan. Uh, he has a book called Taking Stock, Making Money in Microstock, Creating Photos That Sell. Um, it's by Peach Pitt. It has a lot of great topics that will tell you um, things that you can do to get your images improved and things that you can do to, to um, kind of improve your portfolio as well. In addition to, aside from Microstock, um, if you want to be serious about your portfolio and you want to grow it like, like it's a true business, 
yeah, it, you should always read some of the magazines that the professionals read, like PDN and some of the other trade publications, and read some of the websites that are geared um, to the people that are really working day in and day out. So that if you want to grow your collection, you really need to treat it like it is your profession, because really it is. So speaking of your profession, this is a great segue talking about some of the images that you've sold on iStock Photo. You have several that are pretty darn popular. The first one I want to talk about is, uh, I think it's a, a very busy businessman. He's got his cell phone, he's got a briefcase, he's running through an environment. I don't know what that is because you panned it so perfectly. Um, what are some of the ingredients that you've seen that take a shot from an average seller to a top seller. You've got your businessman, you have a living room that sold very, very well. You have a guy delivering boxes that's a good seller. So tell us about uh, some of the elements that make up a great selling image. Sometimes finding a, a, um, you know, a best selling image is, is tricky. Sometimes I'll shoot something that I think is gonna be a great seller and it'll turn out to just get a, a trickle of downloads and then something that I don't expect will be a, a huge seller will end up being you know, a really successful uh, um, seller for me. And, and it's always nice to examine those and take a look at your collection and see what's selling and try and pick out the things that are working. One thing I've always noticed is um, images that are kind of boiled down to the subject so that it's um, all of the detail that's extraneous is taken out of it. And that's kind of been one of the things that I like with uh, design, whether it's a website or magazine um, a brochure is something that looks like it's so simple that it should have taken two seconds to put together, but actually took someone a lot of time. Like, for instance, this businessman on the go shot, um, it does have a nice pan background. You can tell that it's in a city, which relates really well to business, but there's not a lot of details aside from that. There's not a sign in the background. You really can't tell that, you know, there's cars on the other side of the pillars. Um, just extraneous details that get in the way of delivering the message. That's, that's one of the biggest things that I've found that make very successful images. Well, it's all these good, good info. Well, let's touch base on the equipment that you use on these shoots. Uh, I know you're a Canon shooter. So what's in your bag when you're going out to take some photos uh, on a normal uh, weekday? Well, um, one thing with, um, with my gear, um, I tend to be shooting on a little bit of a, a shoestring budget. So... Um, I really stretch my gear as much as I can. I'm shooting with a Canon 5D currently. Um, I have not upgraded to a 5D Mark II. I'd uh, really love to, to be able to, to shoot video, but I've been using mine for so long, and I feel like the next version of that, that uh, 5D is around the corner. So I've been kind of holding off on that and just using every little bit that I can out of the gear that I currently have. Let's talk a little bit about your uh, moonlighting career as the co-host of Light Source and a website that I really love called studiolighting.net. We've had a history for a couple of years at least where uh, I've been um, very familiar with Light Source and studiolighting.net. So can you tell us a little bit about the podcast, where we can find it, and about the website? Oh, sure. Studiolighting.net is a website for photographers to learn about lighting techniques. Um, there's lots of articles and there's news on the website. Um, one of the things that we've done over the past, oh, I believe it's four or five years now, was a, a podcast called Light Source. Um, and myself and Bill Crawford were the hosts of the show. And um, there is a huge uh, backlog of, of interviews there. And Mark's on there a number of times. And um, a number of, of other people that you've actually seen on How Do You Do That were also on the show. Um, and a lot of other names that you'll recognize. Zach Arias, Chase Jarvis, David Hobby. Um, and they come on and just talk about uh, photography and um, what they do. And um, we go over images and they talk about things that kind of interest them and what they do in their career. So there's a lot of really, really great resources on there and a, a lot of information that would keep you busy for quite a long time. Just you know, getting caught up on all the content if you haven't seen it by now. So you've interviewed uh, the but almost 100 professional photographers, some very, very well-known photographers. How has that influenced your photography? And what are some of the, the big things that are takeaways from that, from your point of view? Well, um, there's a lot of things that, um, that I've gleaned from a lot of the photographers that we've had on the show over the years. And it, it's kind of funny. Uh, a lot of times I've been fortunate enough to find, um, we'd have someone come on the show and they would say something that would ring true for me and something that I was struggling with at that moment. So it was very lucky that um, we got to talk to a lot of those people. Um, one that that sticks out in my mind that I've actually picked up a lot recently 
Um, and we heard this from Chase Jarvis, Zach Arias, um, uh, lots of people. And that is to, when you go out shooting, shoot what you love or shoot what really motivates you. And those sorts of things are energizing me to want to go and shoot more. And that's probably one of the biggest things that I'm learning again at this moment is, is if you're not shooting something that moves you, the photo isn't really going to move somebody else. So that's probably one of the biggest lessons that that's that I've picked up right about now, um, looking back on some of the shows. Well, that's phenomenal advice. So um, unfortunately, Ed, we're out of time. I think we could talk for another two hours easily, but we can't. We're, we're out of time. So thank you so much for joining us today. Thanks for having me, Mark. You bet. Well, remember, if you have suggestions for how they do that, somebody you'd like to see on the show, or a question you'd like me to ask somebody, you can send that to me at askmark at adorama.com. And as always, you can see all of our episodes at the Adorama Learning Center, along with all kinds of articles about photography and photography-related gear and everything else. Please subscribe to our videos so that you don't miss a single episode. Well, thanks for joining me this week. I'll see you again next week. This episode is brought to you by Adorama TV. Visit the Adorama Learning Center where you'll find photography tips and techniques, links to the gear used in this episode, and related videos. For all the latest photography, video, and computer gear, visit Adorama.com. And the next time you're in New York City, visit our store located on 18th Street between 5th and 6th Avenue.